Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe again. Uh, yesterday, I was talking about like uh, color depth, right? Pretty much I was saying that for the most part, like when I do my dailies, I always work at 32 bit depth, right? And then like uh, when I want to make some quick adjustments or whatever, I reduce like the color depth down to 8 bit. And then I make my adjustments, you know, move my car, my camera around and all this stuff. And once I'm ready to render, I set all the settings back up to like 32 bits and then I you know, render everything out. Something new for me or something that I had to learn or had to experiment with is when to use 32 bit and when not to use it, right? I'm no expert on the subject. I'm not going to pretend like I am. There's definitely plenty of information out there about like color depth and it goes into details exactly what it works and all this stuff and so on. You know, but uh, simply put, the higher the bit depth, the more information you're going to get. Pretty simple, right? You guys can look it up and learn more about the science of that shit than, than I do, right? But the thing is that, like, um, when I started to mess around with 32-bit uh, versus 8-bit, first of all, obviously, it's going to eat up more of your resources of your computer, right? Uh, most of my dailies, as you can see here, there's a lot of glows, right? Fire, flames, uh, gradients, any type of um, uh, lens flares, you know, you want a halo effect, you know, some kind of like a, a diffusion that you want with your color information. Usually, the higher the bit depth, it looks way better, right? This is 32-bit. Now, I'm not going to change anything. What I'm going to do is basically with 32-bit, as you can see, I have a filter that has like this halo effect going around my model here, right? That's used at 32-bit. So there's a lot of pixels or a lot of uh, bits that has a lot of color information. It has a nice gradient that you're able to see here, right? From 32-bit, I'm going to drop down to 8-bit and you can see automatically how much it changed, right? Yeah, you're able to see a little bit like the, the halo effect here going around the model, but like it's not, it's not as defined as it was with 32-bit bit right like i said using 32 bit can take up a lot of resources on your computer right and for the most part say when i'm doing something for like paul or if i need to do a vfx for someone there have been times where i used 8 bit because it's faster and depending on what i'm doing it's usually not that necessary to have that amount of information right and it's also it's faster to render like I said, it's going to be a personal thing. It's going to be up to you to mess around with it. But for when I'm doing a VFX for, say, someone like Paul for his channel, when it's something quick, you know, like funny, maybe nothing too serious, you know, 8-bit has worked fine. Every time if you watch Paul's channel, if you see some kind of a VFX going on, uh, usually I'll use like 8-bit uh, def, you know, uh, information when I'm doing stuff in After Effects for him or for anybody else, right? 32-bit is more for my stuff. You know, <laughs> when I'm doing my own personal dailies, obviously I want to have like the best image possible when I'm working with the After Effects and like see like this looks cool right it gives you more um, options for you to mess with right using all the blurs and stuff like that you know when you mess with 32 bit so that being said I want to end the video with this um, when I started working with Pa uh, and I started doing more camera work with them we stayed using uh, mainly uh, the camera setting was at 8 bit uh, color depth right little by little I started to understand more about messing with the camera and then when I do some color correcting and then uh, editing in Premiere Pro sometimes some of the footage or sometimes we couldn't get enough light inside of a computer or a specific area so when I wanted to crank up like the image you know a lot of detail would get lost inside the shadows or areas that were dark so we moved from 8 bit to 10 bit this camera was able to do 10 bit color depth it did make a massive difference you know once we started started uh, filming in 10 bit now like the image does look better obviously but most importantly there's still a lot of more like image data that i'm able to save when i'm able to like crank up the shadows or something if we were to film inside of a computer and if it's too dark i'm able to like increase the shadow uh, and you're uh, and there's still enough information within like the dark areas that way you can see more of like the computer parts and the details and whatnot so going from 8 bit to 10 bit filming wise has helped uh, has helped me a lot, right? Now, that being said, obviously, there's more color information. The size of the files are bigger. So that's something to keep in mind as well. The project files get bigger. If you're doing some good production quality product stuff, obviously, you want to have more information for the for your editors, for the post-production process. You know, fil filming in 10-bit can help. However, if you're doing like a vlog style, like a quick, you know, just point and shoot type of thing, there's really no point to do that. Filming in 8-bit will be just fine. People probably won't even notice, right? If you're just like doing like a vlogging or whatever, you probably won't need that much color information. So I guess that's the point of this video is understanding how much color information you really need for whatever it is that you're doing. That way you don't like eat up most too much memory or computer space and like it'll be quicker to edit and to uh, render out and stuff like that. So, all right, that's all I got for this video. So anyways, hope it helps. Take care and peace.